Welcome to On the Brink with Andy Simon. Hi, I'm Andy Simon. And as you know, I'm your host and your guide. And we're here to help you get off the brink. My job is to bring you people who can help you see, feel, and think in new ways so that you can soar. So Gina Paloni found me on the internet and we've become great colleagues sharing all kinds of stuff. She's gonna tell you about an upcoming summit that I'd like you to participate in, but she's got some big ideas to share. Who is Gina? Gina is the founder and CEO of Gina Paloni Group, a consultancy that assists entrepreneurs and leaders to grow their business through implementation of the firm's proven strategic planning, business development, and executive coaching practices. So today we're gonna to hear about all kinds of ways to strategically plan better, develop your business better, and in fact, really become better at what you're doing. She works with leaders to discover their company's unique vision and mission and helps them unleash the full potential of their teams to drive extraordinary performance and results. And I bet you're listening and saying, okay, what is she gonna help me with today? you'll be amazed. She has extensive multidisciplinary experience in sales, business development, team leadership, strategy, and operations. And she's going to tell you more about her own journey. I can read this. But at the end of the day, Gina is just a special woman who's going to come into your life today and add all kinds of richness because she's a very rich lady. And I think this is much as much excitement for me as it is for you and for her. Gina, thank you for joining me. Oh, Andy, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I feel like we're not only becoming colleagues, but friends. And that's been really joyful for me. It's an interesting transition too, isn't it? When all of a sudden transaction becomes more feeling and it's great fun together. Well, mm -hmm. I'm delighted you're here. But let's talk to the audience about who is Gina? What is your journey? Because I think what you're trying to do next, it comes from a grounding and some important things you've done already. So share with them who's Gina, where you've been and how we're going to take it forward please. Thank you, Andy. So um, when I think about who I am at my core um, and, you know, sort of how it's, it's developed me as a person, my mom always taught me, you know, treat the janitor with the same respect as you do the CEO. So I feel for me, uh, I've been privileged to be in leadership positions and I've sort of always had that mantra in the back of my head and, you know, whether it's conscious leadership, servant leadership, I'm extremely passionate about that. And, and really, I think more than ever, treating people, treating the person as a person first before you think of them as an employee or a tool to get something that you want done. So, um, you know, my background wasn't privileged. We were privileged in that my parents saved a lot of money. We were the first, uh, my sister and I, generation to go to college. And the extent of it was they said, you know, putting you through college and then I get out of college and I don't know what to do or how to get a job. And I remember at the time, back then, women, you would take a typing test and, you know, you became an assistant. And that's how I started my journey and worked for the small PR company. And then I stumbled into a career in sales, um, which really, I feel like I learned how to sell, selling my dad, figuring out the times of day to ask him for things. And I really found sales quite empowering because I felt like whatever you put into it was what you could put out, get out of it. I didn't feel as a woman, you know, your numbers were your numbers, whether you were a man or a woman. So I, I didn't really feel, um, you know, growing up in my career um, that I was, you know, unequal, right, in any way. So I developed quickly. I was tapped for um, leadership positions. Um, I ran all of sales for Equinox Fitness Clubs uh, in my uh mid thirties and uh, it was a big job, $150 million in revenue, hundred salespeople. I was part of the management team that sold the company um, to the private equity firms that purchased it from the founding family. And then, you know, fast forward, I've had different leadership positions. I've been in the corporate world. I have, um, I lost both of my parents within the first year of my marriage um, and, uh, and married a man with four wonderful daughters. So I became a stepmom overnight. And that sort of changed me as a person. And I um, wound up wanting to do something to give back. And I helped to co-found the US operations for a charity um, doing work in Malawi. Um, we built an orphan feeding center, the first internationally accredited school there, um, as well as women empowerment programs. And that's really been one of the greatest joys of my life. Um, and I think at my core, I'm a builder. So I've built 
sales teams and you know organizations and charities and companies as in, in leadership positions. And then I kind of got to the point where, you know what, I've got all of this knowledge and I really want to help other entrepreneurs and I want to step into my own power and greatness and have my own company. That was a goal that I've always had. And that was really with the founding of the, the Gina Poloni group. Um, so I want to empower lead, leaders to, you know, I'm told a lot of times that I help them discover a vision that's bigger for themselves than they ever thought possible. But I don't just do that. I've been in their shoes, so I know all the steps to take. Um, so I've helped them from everything from doing a capital raise to, you know, strategic planning, business development, team leadership, team development, team structure, um, everything. So I can really think the difference is many times, like you know, a lot of consultants come in and out, I actually stay with them through the, the process. So um, I feel like that's my, you know, kind of um, differentiator. So um, I don't know if you want me to dive into the the summit at all a little bit, or if uh, we well, want to. Let's migrate there because yeah. you are moving from being um, employed to being an entrepreneur, and entrepreneurs see things through a fresh lens. Yeah. You know, we had a program at WashU called the Simon Initiative for Entrepreneurship, and I taught entrepreneurship at Washington University in St. Louis. Entrepreneurs see things differently. And I have a hunch you bring that expertise into the companies that you serve as a consultant in a, in a different fashion. Is there something that you can share with the listeners about how as entrepreneurs, we do begin to see things differently? We're not tactical and practical, but not just strategic either. We see a bigger picture in a different fashion. Something you might be able to share with them. Yeah, I, I definitely think we see a bigger picture. And I think that you have to have a little bit of crazy to be an entrepreneur. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just, it's really, it's, it's challenging every single day. You know, I mean, it's like a roller coaster ride. Like the highs can be really high and the lows are really low. Um, and you have to have that, you know, that drive to keep moving forward, no matter what comes up, you know, and, and today more than ever, whether it's, you know, you're challenged by tech or this or that, or the other thing or competition and COVID and how do you, you know, lead a, a team through in a post COVID world and what is it going to look like, um, all of those things. So I really think that, um, the differences entrepreneurs, they just, they, they see around court, like they just don't give up. It's like over, around, under, or through. Whereas a lot of people, if, you know, they get stuck, they just kind of go, oh, okay. Or they're, they're in a certain position in life and they're okay with it. But I think entrepreneurs for better or worse are never satisfied. Well, and I don't think that's a better or worse. I think that's good in that <laughs> they're always growing and, and arriving isn't the destination. It's the journey. And that's really why I so focus on that journey, because even for yourself, uh, the entrepreneur was always there. I have a hunch when you grew Equinox, it wasn't in a fixed fashion, as opposed to a very creative one, right? Very you know? much so. Very and much I bet so. you learned that sales isn't uh, five steps, follow these, you'll be fine. I mean, I think, you know, if sales is all intuition, empathy, understanding when you, like you talk about Andy having a conversation and I've never have felt like I have sold anything first of all the advice I would give anybody is don't sell anything that you don't believe in because it just it won't be authentic and you can't I've sold things like travel and fitness and things like that that I am passionate about myself so it's just a persuasion of like this is something that has touched my soul or impacted my life in this way. And if you do it, you can get those same results too. And, you know, and we talked a little bit before we were rolling about, you know, stress and, and, and all of that. So for me, like, you know, running and, and exercise and yoga and having that minute to take a pause and, and listen, and it's, and it's, it's chemical, right? It's like, you're, you're, you're having this, these things that go off in your brain and, and it's just really, you know, really helpful to be able to have those practices. You said something important, though, for the listener or the viewer, and that is listening. Entrepreneurs have a wonderful way of not having all the answers. 
Um, they have a way of listening so that their brain has, you know, the research is great. The more ideas you have, the more likely you have an abundance of them. They come together and all of a sudden you have an epiphany. You go, that's what it's about. That's how to solve it. And that's the real trick is to listen, fill your head with lots of, you know, I don't want you to have the paradox of choice, but I do want you to begin to see, particularly coming out of the pandemic, that there are lots of things going on that can really help you visualize new solutions, entrepreneurial, create new markets, a little blue ocean style, but also think about it as legitimate. It's okay. You don't have to be in the box anymore. There are no boxes. We're all creating a new sandbox, aren't we? Yes, definitely. I couldn't agree more. And it's funny that you say that because one of the companies that I, I worked with um, had a, a particular business model and you know it really wasn't uh, hitting the goals that they wanted it to hit or achieving the yes. objective. Yeah. And it kind of morphed into something else. And it's like, well, we can leave this going over here, but would it serve us better if we started doing something different over here? And I think entrepreneurs are so much more willing right? To be like, oh, okay, let's try that and, and be able to like scrap, you know, it's like, it's, it, they don't consider it, you know, yes. money down the drain. It's like, it's all learning. There's never failure. It's all learning all the time. Well, that, and, I mean, that's important to emphasize because unless you do, you won't know if it's right or wrong. Right. And, and, and so, take chances. that's exactly right. You can, and the, the neat part is that the direction they go on as a starting gate, I used to think of it I wanted to write a book. You got through the starting gate, you're an entrepreneur, and now you moved into the center lane and things are moving along, and then you stall. <laughs> and in my oh, first yeah. book, On the Brink, I had eight clients who came to us because they were stalled or stuck, some large, some small, some entrepreneurial, and some not. And, and I said, but it's all around you. They just couldn't see it. And then right. I said, you'll never move into the left lane unless you scrap a little and try some new stuff and begin to flow it. You've come up with a great idea, though a virtual summit to take the intrepid entrepreneurs and get them unstuck. Mm -hmm. and, and you and I have come together around this and I've done a video for you on it. And so in some ways, I'd love you to talk to our audience about what is it? How'd you come up with it? It's sort of very entrepreneurial. What's it gonna do? Thank you for asking. Um, I'm really passionate about this and um, I named it The Untethered Entrepreneur. Um, because The Untethered Soul was one of my favorite books. And the central thesis, I don't know if you've read it, is really the concept, concept of surrender and surrender in every moment. And um, the author, Mickey Singer, talks about this concept of, you know, it took us 14.6 billion years for you and I to get to this point, to be sitting in front of one another. Yes. It's perfect moment. There are no accidents. The fact that, you know, you were born, I was born, we're here, we found each other through the end. I mean, it's crazy, right? So here it we is are. Crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. And we're having this conversation and we came together and we have, we share so many, you know, passions and similarities and, and, and values, right? Around women and breaking through the mold. I'm sure we'll get into that later, but you know, so to me, what I have seen so many times in my work with entrepreneurs is it's not the strategies or this, or they're not smart or they're not driven. It's the fact that they get stuck, right? And they get stuck. Most of the times it's mindset. It's always comes back to the mindset and they've done a certain thing a certain way. And they've, as much as we've talked about the crap things, they may want to, but they don't necessarily know how, right? So I think when I come in and I try to, when I work with them, we really get down to, first of all, what's your vision, not just for your business, but for your life, right? And your business should support your, support your life, not the other way around. And, you know, with my clients recently, I said, listen, I said, I'm kind of sitting on the lifeguard stand looking and I'm watching you thrash around the pool. And if you keep doing that, you're going to drown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab you out. And we're going to sit on the side and we're going to have a conversation ah. because if you're in the pool and you're drowning, you can't think straight. So, so many entrepreneurs also, <laughs> they don't take the time, right? They think that they're so busy in the business, working in the business and fighting fires. And listen, I get it. I've been there, but I've developed some strategies and I know now how not to do that. And I know how to focus on the important, not the immediate. So 
I think, you know, for me coming with, you know, you're at background, corporate anthropologist, all the work that you've done, the work that you're doing with women that I'm passionate about, all of the, the, the esteemed experts, I am so, so proud to be surrounded by all of you who lift me up and make me look better. <laughs> and I really truly believe I chose people from all different disciplines, um, you know, corporate anthropology, NLP, um, you know, successful entrepreneurs who have scaled companies who've raised capital. So I didn't want it to be, I want it to be a mixture of, because I feel like me, I'm like, I'm spiritual, but I'm practical, you know? <laughs> I run hard and I do yoga. Like, so it's this, there's always this yin and this yang, right? So I think that I wanted to bring a number of people together. You know, we have people who do energy work and NLP, but then there are people who are going to give real life practical skills because I hate when somebody doesn't tell me, how do I do it? It's like, don't talk about it conceptually. How are we doing it? So I wanted it to be that mixture of real life, great, really great advice that you can implement. And whether that's a five minute meditation or a, uh, a, you know, one of our authors wrote this amazing book and he's going to Keith Herman, he's going to talk about, you know, really the success principles that anybody can apply to their life, no matter where you came from, no matter what your background is. You know, I grew up in a one bedroom apartment for the first 14 years of my life. It doesn't matter where you come from. Yes. You can always succeed if you know the strategies and the tools and you develop the right mindset and you have a compelling vision, but you have to have all of it. And I think sometimes that's the challenge that yep. they have one component, but they don't necessarily have all of them. So that's what we together, I believe are going to do. Yep. So uh, let's get a little more concrete about the folks you're bringing. This is unusual. How many days is the summit going to be? It's 21 days and the, uh, each an interview will, it'll start on September 29th. And each day we'll launch the uh, one interview and then it'll start, uh, it'll be like, I think, I think it's going to be at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but people have all day to, to, to watch it. And then we'll, we'll be doing replays, but it's 21 straight days. The interviews are 30 to 45 minutes in length and, you know, conversational, just like we're doing it. But again, there will be, there are going to be some amazing gifts, lots of things like courses and, you know, you've graciously uh, given uh, some discounts on your courses and some free gifts. So, I mean, it, the value that people are going to get is just going to be amazing. And I really, truly do believe it's going to unlock them. So in a sense, it's 21 days to transform your life. Yes. Your and this is very yeah. cool. But let me, let me tell the listeners what I did. So at least we can share that. But I, we met some of the other folks and I, I would love to talk a little bit about accountability or about improving sales with body or about the woman who went to Belgium to have a chocolate factory and said, that's not who I want to be. And how do I move? They were really interesting stories globally. So I'm going to talk about, you know, how do we help using our anthropological methodology, help entrepreneurs begin to visualize Gina spoke about a vision, but visualize because we are storytellers. And now if we're going to build something, we need to visualize that story and mm -hmm. then begin to understand the way we backward plan to get there. And then the small steps to begin to move forward so that we can see where we're going as if it's a Google map. But if I don't know where I'm going, the shotgun doesn't do much. Am I, I may be tactical and practical, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you mentioned how often we go in a circle and she's got to pull them up out of the pool and we do very many times the same thing. It's like pause. And pausing is very hard for people. They'd rather move even if it's not valuable. And then what does that really mean? But the visual, the way we understand the way the brain mind works is that it leaves your story. And now what's your story? And what would you like it to be? And is it working or isn't it? And how do we begin to frame that? So we have a half hour, 40 minutes to really do that in, in depth. Some of the other people, Gina, share with them, because I was just intrigued by who you have brought together. It's not expected. And that's the most joyful part about it. Please. Yeah. So we have, I mean, I, there's, we don't have time to go into everybody. And I, I would hate to spot like one or two, but I would love to just give a general overview. So um, Sam Silverstein, we did talk, uh, you know, he is, uh, an author and really focuses his practice on accountability, works with um, corporations. He started the Account Accountability Institute. And that is a subject to me that is really near and dear to my heart. So, um, 
Be and you know, he basically, his philosophy is that accountability is the most important leadership quality, but he doesn't define accountability, I think, in the way that, you know, he talks about the difference between responsibility and accountability. And it's, you know, really accountability, it's, it's simple, right? It's just doing what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do that. Okay, well, that sounds really simple, right? <laughs> but how often do we not do that? And it's not just, you know, and I think, I think a lot of these things are like muscles, right? So it's a practice, you know, you can say, I want to get in shape, but if you stare at the weights and you don't pick them up, you're never going to change your muscles. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing in, in our business lives as well. So you have to start with, I think, taking small steps, right? Just if you say you're going to get up at 6.30, don't hit the snooze button because, you know, you've already started the day like lying to yourself. And then maybe that sounds small, but it's those tiny little lies to yourself that are add up and it depletes you. So yep. have the small, tiny little wins, right? And then I think you just build upon that. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So we become accountable, accountable as people. And then we become accountable as leaders, right? And then you know, maybe we're even taking it on to the national or the world stage, really, you know, being leaders and, and caring and about the issues that we care about, right, and standing up for those things. So there's accountability. Um, I mentioned, uh, you know, Keith, um, there are several entrepreneurs that I love talking to about, you know, social media, like um, Lisa Beyer, who talks about uh, PR secrets, and she's gone from traditional PR yes. to social PR and what a different world, right? And I think we're all confused, at least I can, I'm confused <laughs> by all of the different, you know, the social, the TikTok, the, the clubhouse, sure. the, the that, and like, what are you supposed to be focused on and who do you trust and the done for you services. So we really have a couple of people, uh, you know, who are really going to help us with that. We've got some Brett Bauman, who's, you know, an NLP practitioner and a wonderful coach. I mean, there's so many, there's so yeah. many great, great speakers. The interesting thing, listening to you, is that you were transformed as you were interviewing them, weren't you? I was what? You were transformed as you were interviewing them. Oh my God. Them. You know, you say, it's so funny that you say that because I started off with this thing and obviously you all have, you know, you have your, I want to grow my exposure. I want to help more people, right? But I have to tell you, you know, it was really my first time in the interviewer seat and I think I told you before we were rolling, I love podcasts. I love the medium and I listen to podcasts, you know, all the time when I'm running. So, you know, I really fell in love with the interview process because what you talk about, right? It's storytelling and I'm genuinely interested in people's stories. So it was so much fun and having those conversations was great. And I did, I felt just lifted by this amazing like-minded community of people. Yep. The interesting part is that the podcasts I do, I don't monetize them because I really don't want to be accountable to a third party. We do a little marketing in the middle for ourselves, but I find it enriches both my clients, my potential clients, my audience, myself to bring people like yourself to share with them. How else could I share with them? You know, and it costs nothing. You don't have to pay me. We just enjoy the conversation. And those, and I've had people across the globe say, I love your podcast. Could you please have so-and-so on? And it's easy enough to do that. You just, would you like to be on my podcast? Sure. And, and next thing you know, we're sharing creatures and it's so exciting. So I'm excited to be on your very innovative summit. You know, this is just cool stuff for bringing people together over 21 days. When do we start and how can they find out more about signing up for it? Sure. It starts on September 29th. Um, they can sign up for it by going to the untetheredentrepreneur.com and just putting in their email address and their name. They hit get access and all of the details will become available for them. Or they can reach out directly to me at uh, my, on my website at ginapgroup.com, G-I-N-A, my name, the letter P, group.com. Simple and easy. And we can give them all the details. And obviously, I'm sure you're going to put them in the show notes too. Yes, and everything will be on our, our blog. We'll ship it out. And we'll make sure that we over-determine your success by pushing as far as we can to as many folks. Because this is a great time as if you're going into a special 
um, three week seminar of some kind and each dot is going to connect and add something to you. And then you can go share them as well, which is really the exciting part. And it's free, right? It's absolutely free. And one thing I also wanted to, to mention, I'd love to invite everybody um, to our private Facebook group on Tether Entrepreneur. Um, and, you know, we're our speakers, you know, everybody's interacting and answering questions. So it's just this part of this community. And, you know, I, I also, I just want to kind of finish by saying, as you know, I'm really passionate about conscious leadership. And I truly believe with that in this group, and I'm seeing it already, and it's so exciting to see the interaction and the exchange between people, because there's a huge interest in the subject and yes. in helping to lift the consciousness. Yes. Well, this has been such fun. Uh, one or two things you want them to remember. I like to end because um, people remember the ending often better than the beginning. One, two, three things you want them to, you know, key ideas. You know, failure is always part of the process. Uh -huh. And don't be afraid to fail. And I was taught, you know, in my sales career, every no takes you closer to the yes. So just keep going. If you keep going, you can't fail. Yeah, and that's great. I love yeah. that. Just hold on to that one because mistakeology is something I actually do conferences on and uh, the mistakes are where all the learning goes on. Yes. And unless you do, you won't know if it works or not. And you won't mm -hmm. even know how much it could work because we don't know. We imagine, but we have no idea. So off we go to try. That is just terrific. So let me say goodbye to our listeners and our viewers. Thank you for coming today. And remember, join my Facebook group, Rethink with Andy Simon. Uh, we'd love to have a monthly roundtable at Rethink to talk about how to rethink things. And sometimes you just don't know where it's going to take you. But for an hour, we come together, Women Helping Women Rethink. And it all came out of my book, Rethink Smashing the Myths with and smashing the myths of women in business and it's doing extremely well so you know go to amazon or barnes and noble or your local bookseller to pick it up and it's fun to share our new program um rethink your journey with andy simon is up and operating and it is doing extremely well and we just enjoy helping women become the best that they can be but to gina's point sometimes you might not know how and i don't want to think of us all in the pool you know floundering around but every time I do a workshop or a speech on it, the women come back and said, I never thought. So my little last thoughts, pause, stop for a moment, rethink, what's your story today? Where are you going with it? Is it the one that makes you happy? And if it does, great. But if you're not quite sure, it's a good time to rethink your story. And I'd love to help you do that. So come along and we'll see if we can help you get off the brink and soar. It's been such fun. In any event, it's been a pleasure to have Gina Paoli here. And, and we're going to send out all kinds of information about the upcoming summit, because it's a great time for you to be untethered as an entrepreneur and soar. Thank you, Gina. It's been fun. Bye-bye now. Thank you.